Today we're going to be outlining both VPD and humidity and how they're used in the greenhouse. Please note that some of the concepts in this video are advanced and you should know the basics of humidity control in a greenhouse before viewing this video. The areas we're going to cover today include humidity and VPD, what is humidity, what is VPD, how Argus deals with humidity and VPD, and a summary. Vapor pressure deficit, or VPD, is an important aspect for growers and is essential for growing healthy, high yield plants. To understand VPD, it's important to understand how humidity works. When we talk about humidity, we're talking about the amount of water in the air in the form of vapor. There are two ways to measure humidity, absolute humidity and relative humidity. Absolute humidity tells us exactly how much water vapor is in the air, while relative humidity, or RH, tells us how much water is in the air as a percentage of how much water the air can hold at that temperature. This is where things get confusing because temperature and humidity have a complicated relationship. As temperatures increase, the air holds more water vapor than at lower temperatures. An area sees a drop in RH when the absolute humidity has not changed, but the temperature has increased. High humidity levels can lead to mold growth, damaging crops, and affecting yields. However, RH levels also dictate how much a plant will transpire and how much it will grow. This is because the water we give the plants merely acts as a vehicle for nutrients. Once the nutrients have been metabolized, plants transpire water back into the air and are able to bring in more water and nutrients again. But when RH levels are high, plants have a harder time doing this. The reason is that water vapor in the air creates a certain amount of pressure pushing back on plants as they try to transpire water. As you can imagine, more water vapor in the air, higher RH levels, means more pressure, causing plants to have a harder time transpiring. What is humidity? The amount of moisture in the air is generally expressed as relative humidity, or RH, which measures the water vapor content of the air as mentioned previously. The use of relative humidity to measure the amount of water in the air is because of the air's ability to hold water vapor, which is dependent on the temperature of the air. It is the ratio of actual water in the air to the theoretical saturation point at the current air temperature expressed as a percentage. The saturation point, or dew point, is the maximum amount of water vapor that an air mass can hold at a given temperature and pressure. Anything more than the saturation point condenses out as liquid water. Whenever you see condensation or dew on the surface of an object, it's because the air surrounding that surface has cooled to below its saturation point, causing water vapor to condense into its liquid form. This term can sometimes be misleading because it's dependent on temperature. Warm air has a higher moisture holding capacity than cooler air. Therefore, as the temperature of air increases, the relative humidity decreases even though the amount of water remains constant. Air at 70 degrees Fahrenheit holds twice as much moisture as air at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. In the range of temperatures encountered in a greenhouse, for every 20 degrees Fahrenheit rise in dry bulb temperature, the water holding capacity of the air doubles and the relative humidity is reduced by one half. This relationship is important in managing humidity in the greenhouse. The use of relative humidity for control of the water content of the greenhouse air mass has commonly been approached by maintaining the relative humidity below threshold values, one for the day and one for the night. This humidity control did not allow for optimization of the growing environment, as it does not provide a firm basis for dealing with plant processes such as transpiration in a direct manner. The common purpose of humidity control is to sustain a minimal rate of transpiration. Reducing humidity. Proper watering and adequate plant spacing, having well-drained floors, Moving air and venting moisture are ways to reduce humidity in the greenhouses. The least expensive method is to keep the greenhouse dry, especially going into the night, when the temperature drops. Weeds also contribute to high humidity by holding moisture in the leaf canopy and generating moisture through transpiration. Maintain well-drained greenhouse floors that are free from weeds. Bottom heat, anti-drip plastic, ventilation and heating these all help with reducing humidity. Desired humidity level. To vent and heat the greenhouse in the most energy efficient way, growers might want to purchase a device to measure humidity 
and then heat and vent accordingly. The desirable humidity varies with temperature. Plants in warmer environments can tolerate higher relative humidity. The chart provides corresponding temperature and relative humidity set points for disease prevention. Measuring humidity. The sling psychrometer is still one of the most accurate methods for determining RH. Humidity pocket meters or humidity pens are also available. A recording hydrothermograph provides a continuous chart of dry bulb temperature and relative humidity. What is VPD? VPD stands for vapor pressure deficit. What is vapor pressure deficit and why does it matter? It's a measure of the difference or deficit between the pressure exerted by the moisture currently in the air and the pressure at saturation. Essentially, this is the way the plant would feel measuring the difference between the pressure inside the leaf and the pressure of the air outside, giving us an idea of how easy or difficult it would be for the plant to transpire. VPD is measured in units of pressure and essentially RH and temperature in a single value. VPD units are most often expressed in standard pressure units such as millibars, kilopascals, or pounds per square inch. VPD is sometimes expressed in mass deficit concentration units such as grams of water per cubic meter of dry air or grams of water per kilogram of dry air. The Argus system uses millibars as the default measurement unit, although other measurement units can be configured. High VPD means too much of the water vapor is leaving the plant, leading to the plant drying out and transpiration is unhindered. A low VPD means the water vapor is not leaving the plant, leading to moisture staying on the plant, hindering transpiration, and leading to disease. A lot of research has been done to find the, the ideal VPD for transpiration, ensuring plants drink slowly enough to be able to metabolize nutrients, but fast enough to ensure they are taking up enough. Remember, VPD is not an actual measurement of plant stress or water loss. It is only an indirect indicator. VPD alone can't tell you if your crop is currently content or wilting due to underlying problems such as root disease or acclimatization issues. VPD can only tell you about the potential for water to evaporate from the leaves. Although the actual rate of water loss is not directly proportional to VPD, there is a general relationship. VPD allows you to see if the crop is experiencing drying conditions and then you can then make adjustments as required. The actual rate of water movement through the plant is controlled by three major contributing factors, and VPD has a role in only the first one. Transpiration losses caused by the leaf responding to the environment. Contributing factors include VPD, temperature, solar radiation, wind speed, and CO2 levels. Water availability and water uptake, affected by soil, water availability, salinity, and root system structure and health. Transport mechanisms between the root and the shoot, including the structure and health of the vascular system. The ideal VPD range varies with the crop species and the stage of growth. How Argus deals with humidity and VPD. The Argus system calculates the VPD for any temperature sensor linked to a representative humidity sensor reading. To measure the actual leaf VPD, you would need to accurately measure the temperature of the leaf tissue. This is rarely practical since leaf temperature can vary wildly throughout a crop as some leaves are in shade and others are in full sunlight. For stress indication and humidity control purposes, the point is not to measure the actual leaf VPD to within strict tolerances, but to gain an insight into how the current temperature and humidity surrounding the crop is affecting the plants. The air temperature and humidity near the leaves as measured by a properly positioned aspirated sensor module suspended within or as close as possible to the crop canopy is usually sufficient to provide a good indication of the actual leaf VPD. This is because both the air temperature and humidity in this vicinity are the integrated effects of external influences such as heat loss and gain by the greenhouse structure, evapotranspiration cooling occurring in the leaves and soil surfaces, and the actual temperature of nearby objects such as leaves and other plant surfaces. As such, they can provide a good approximation of the leaf VPD. To calculate the current VPD, the Argus system normally uses the climate temperature reading and the climate humidity reading from an aspirated sensor module that is properly positioned in the crop. Our first choice is to use these sensors since they're already installed in most applications and they can provide reasonable approximations of leaf surface VPDs, saving the cost of purchasing and installing additional sensors. 
However, if your application requires an actual leaf or leaf surrogate temperature measurement, this can easily be accomplished since VPD calculations are available on any temperature sensor screen as well as in the Math Matrix program. If you're already measuring temperature and humidity in the zone, then a VPD calculation is available for use on each temperature sensor screen. By simply designating a suitable humidity sensor as the reading source, the system automatically calculates the current VPD in millibars using the air moisture content information provided by the selected humidity sensor. Using VPD values. The successful use of VPD calculations depends on good representative measurements. Careful application of this information to, in control programs and tuning the control response based on your observations. There are several things you can do with this information. Here are some ideas. Data recording. You can record and view the VPD values in the Argus graph. Accumulation event recording. Daily VPD totals can also provide a good summary of the total evaporation potential from day to day. Alarms. You can establish high and low management alarm thresholds to warn you whenever the VPD is beyond the limits you set. It's important to note that VPD is just an indicator. It is not a direct measurement of plant water transport or the current evaporation rate. For more information, see the Argus VPD application note or contact Argus support.